Hello again, and welcome back to our discussion of uh, I.O. functions, mostly input functions at this point in the C language, trying to cover those that are uh, most useful. C has a variety of functions that are available for uh, input and output, and maybe hit the ones that are not as thoroughly covered in your text as some others, but which remain important, particularly in completing the upcoming project. So uh, in the first video, we talked about fgets, which is um, a function that reads a string from a file, does a little bit of processing for it, but it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, this time we're going to talk about fscanf, which does a lot more uh, work for you and has uh, a lot more features, which you may or may not want to use in a particular application, by the way. So uh, you're familiar, I'm sure, with scanf, because you use scanf in the scenario um, project and other projects, probably to read from the terminal, that is from your keyboard, uh, and to convert something you type, say, the letters 1, 2, 3, into the number decimal integer 123. That's the kind of stuff that scanf does because it accepts a format string, which tells scanf how to convert what it reads from pure ASCII text into other C data types as needed. <laughs> Excuse me. In this example, I'm just reading a string, so there's very little conversion going on. So this example would read from the file pointer FP. We talked a little bit about the file pointer uh, in the previous video. I'll go back over some of that in the next video. But basically, it's a pointer that points to a file on disk so that C can manipulate the file, read from it, or write to it without having to specify more than once the entire name and path to the file. So fscanf like, is like scanf, except instead of being locked to reading from the keyboard, it's able to read from a file, a file you specify and that you open on disk. Uh, it returns the number of items scanned. Uh, probably when you use scanf, which also does this, you just ignored the return value because it wasn't very useful. But it turns out when you're reading from a file, it's useful because it lets you know when you run out of things to read. and You can stop your file read wildly. Fscanf, like scanf, reads and converts according to the format string. So if you put a percent %d, it will try to convert what it's read to a decimal number, percent %f to a float, percent %s, it will just basically capture the string. Well, you'll see the results may be a little surprising when we walk through the code in just a second. So let's go ahead and walk through the code. So let me get this set up. Okay, here's a file uh, in an old version of Vis Visual Studio Code that um, demonstrates using fscanf to read from the file. So uh, some of this we went over in the previous video, but I'll go quickly through it again. You do need to hash include standard io.h because the fscanf function like the fgets and the fread and others is defined in that now, each file, so you need to see compiler to find that to know um, how to use this, uh, this method. Um, I've again declared a buffer with 2000 bytes, initialized to zero. So that's the place where I'm going to tell scanf to put the string it's reading in this case. And I'm going to do the f open as before, meaning I'm going to search for a file called unauthorizedbread.txt. That's a science fiction story about the Internet of Things on the disk, and I'm going to open it for read. Now, this assumes that it's in the current folder, which it is. Otherwise, I'd have to give a path to it. Uh, and it assumes I spelled it correctly. If I spelled it incorrectly, I'm going to, the file's going to fail to open. We're going to end up down here, fail to open file, and we're going to exit, which is about the only thing you can do at that point until you correct the error. If the file's open successfully, we'll be down here on line 20, 21, where we do try the actual first read from the file. We're reading a single percent S. I wonder what that will actually read. Will that read a whole line? Will that read one letter? Will that read one word? We're going to run the program in a minute and find out. Because fscanf's behavior is a bit different than fgets's behavior, as you'll see. OK, while the result is not in the file, in other words, when fscanf runs out of things to read, it returns a special value, I think it's minus one, which says, hey, there's no more data here. 
So that's going to break me out of the while loop. We're going to close the file and quit. So if we compile, and you see the loop just consists of printing what you read, read the next line. Print what you read, read the next line. Let's compile this thing. Uh, again, I'm using the command line here because my version of Visual Studio Code and my version of OS X on Mac is so old, I can't really upgrade. So I'm working with what I got. Uh, this file is called read demo scanf, should be fscanf, but. And let's create an output file called uh, fscanf demo. Didn't get any compiler errors, didn't get any warnings. Warnings are probably turned down to a low level and in general it would be wise if I turned them up. There might be some subtleties in there that got missed, but there were no gross syntax errors and this will work fine for our demonstration. When I run this program, it's gonna open the file, which is the large text file, and it's gonna spew that file out in this tiny little window at the bottom, which I might make a little bigger for you. And let's see what happens. So to run it, in at least in the bash shell that I'm in, I just type the name of the output file. This would be .exe if you're on Windows. Let's see what it does. Whoa. That's a lot of words. That's a lot of very short lines consisting of one word each. So that must be what the percent %s does in fscanf. It reads up to the first space. Remember, f get s read the whole line up to the first new line it found. Whereas if scanf reads word by word by word and stops at the first space it found. That's why we got this long list of every word in the file, each on its own line. That behavior might be useful in some contexts. It's probably not what you want if you're just uh, copying files around or your program needs to process uh, text, but maybe you can make use of this feature. And it's fscanf is very useful if I wanted to convert some of those words from ASCII text into say integers or floating point numbers. So to wrap it up, don't forget, you need to close the file, uh, which is the last statement here. Sometimes we forget that. For a file open for read, it probably doesn't matter because when my program terminates, the operating system will close the file forcibly for us. But when you're writing a file, as you'll see later on in later examples, uh, it is important to close the file because programs do something called lazy writes. That is, as they're writing data, rather than copying, hitting the disk basically for every single line, they do it in chunks. So they wait till there's say 10 lines and they write the 10 lines. They wait till there's 10 more lines that you wrote and then they flush those 10 lines to disk. <clears throat> if you don't have close the file that you're writing and your program exits, then you may be missing the last chunk of lines because they never got written. So, okay, I'll see you in the next video, and we'll talk about uh, F-Read. Thanks a lot.